everyone, and welcome to this Friday the 13th edition of Freight Waves Now. Up a little later, Dean Croak's going to give us an update for carriers, but first, I wanted to dive into some stuff that I'm watching for the brokers. Behind me, I've got our outbound tender rejection index based on our regions. So it's divided into the Northeast, Southeast, Northwest, and also Southwest regions. And I wanted to break these out just to show where some of the disruption in the market is occurring this week. This orange line right here is the Northeast uh, tender rejection index. You can see clearly that it had a little bit of a lull and then it spiked towards the end of the week and it's leading the country in terms of outbound tender rejections. What this does is it increases the pressure on pricing. So the rates should go up following this. The rest of the country is actually pretty soft. Down here in the west coast, things are looking really mild with low tender rejections, no significant spikes. The southeast, even with Dorian, actually had re reducing tender rejection rates. So that's gonna make the rates come down a little bit more, and we think that's due to a lot of the excess capacity in the area due to the hurricane relief efforts. Now, I wanna dive a little bit deeper into the Northeast with the, uh, the next chart here. Behind me, you've got the Harrisburg market, the Philadelphia market, and the Elizabeth, New Jersey market. Now, these are three of the biggest markets in the Northeast right now. The Harrisburg market is a big reason that we saw that spike in tender rejections out of the Northeast, spiking up to 6.71%. Down through here, we have the rest of, you know, Philadelphia had a nice little jump along with Elizabeth, New Jersey. Now, Elizabeth, New Jersey has been one of the most emerging markets over the last several months. So it's a big market to watch, especially when these tender rejections go up. So brokers seriously need to consider covering these loads today real fast, especially over the weekend and into next week. Welcome to the Carrier Update presented by AT&T Business. So we have Dean Croak here and he's gonna give us an update on some of these new proposals for hours of service. Dean, what do we got? Yeah, Zach, uh, there's some interesting things going on. There's a, a 15 day comment period that we've got to run until uh, the 28th of September. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what carriers should be doing between now and then. And uh, what I'd like to start out with is a chart behind us, which just shows you the disparity between the number uh, of hours that drivers drive each day. So the lighter colours here are the number of hours that drivers drive on line three of their ELD device, which is the on-duty driving piece. And you can see some of the lighter ones here are down in the five and a half to six range. That's not a huge number when you've got 11 hours to run. The darker blues are up in the mid sevens. Wow. So they're getting much higher utilisation. But essentially, you know, the average for most drivers is around seven hours a day, which means they're only using about 63% of their available driving hours each day. A lot of wasted time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have a look at the next chart, you'll see that the average for different lengths of haul varies. Mm -hmm. You can see that there's about 7.54 hours for the green line, which is the uh, over the road longer haul driver because they've got longer hauls, less population, less traffic, higher average road speed. We're down around uh, seven hours here on the orange, um, which is the more regional carrier. Mostly sleeper cabs, you get some day cab operators doing multi-stops for you know, dedicated runs. Uh, down here you've got a much lower number, uh, down in the five range. So they're the short haul guys working in the 100 air mile radius, bumping docks all day. Probably on hourly pay. Right. You're going to see a lot of drivers up here on, on mileage based pay. These, these are the over road drivers, yeah, these are going to be your P&D drainage type operators. And, and the basic message is these guys here, you know, guys and girls are only getting about 63% of their total available capacity each day to, to drive. Uh -huh. Now the reality is you will never get 11 hours because you always have traffic <laughs> and weather and, and delays. Uh, so, but theoretically you should be able to get more than the average of seven hours. And one of the things that the uh, FMCSA and, and, and Administrator Martinez has asked for is public comment on ways to make the hours of service regulation more flexible. So he's announced a range of things, which is a 45 day comment period that started in August. It'll run through to September 28, and it includes changes to things like the 30 minute rest break. Uh, and a particular one I want to focus a bit on today is the split sleeper berth rule. And uh, so every day a driver has to have 10 hours off before starting a new driving shift. And uh, with their particular change they're proposing is allowing drivers to split that 10 hour break into a block of seven and a block of two. So a seven and two split instead of eight and two. So allowing drivers to have a little bit more flexibility each day. The reality is that a lot of drivers are saying through the comments that they're putting into the, to the government already, we would prefer five and five. Wow, that's a big difference. Why is so much of a difference? But it's what it used to be with paper okay. logs. If you study <laughs> fleets that ran paper logs and ran safely, 
the sleeper teams would always split five and five, five on, five off, five on, five off. And they'd swap drivers out and they were really safe. The reality is that most people that sleep in the day, when they drive through sunrise, the, the sunlight wakes the brain up, ah. right? And if you're having a 10 hour break in the day, what'll happen is you'll go to bed and you'll sleep for about four and a, five, four and a half hours in a bouncing sleeper cab, <laughs> right? And then you get up, Right. and you get this big dose of sunlight because you open the curtains and you have a chat and that sunlight wakes you up. So when you go back to get into bed, you actually can't fall back asleep because wow. the sunlight is trying to wake the brain up. This is the same for shift workers. Most shift workers that work night shift go home, drive home, get a big dose of sunlight and then go to bed for about four and a half hours, which is three sleep cycles. And then they'll, they'll do things outside, get more sunlight, and then not go back to sleep until the 12 hour shift starts about six or seven o'clock at night. And how many sleep cycles is optimal? Oh, well, you need about, uh, generally about six sleep cycles a day okay. is probably, you know, pretty good. Um, you know, it's cumulative, so you don't have to get seven and a half hours or five sleep cycles solid. Six is good for, for the average person. Uh, but if you can get three sleep cycles, which is four and a, four and a half hours, mm -hmm. and then maybe get another two sleep cycles or three hours later in the day, right. but the key is not allowing sunlight to hit <laughs> the optic nerve. Right. So seven and two won't work really because most drivers are only sleeping four and a half, which means five on, five off actually works best because if you're getting four and a half every five hour break, you're actually getting nine hours sleep every 24, Wow. as opposed to four and a half every 24. Right, so that's a lot safer. It's, a, it's much yeah. safer, right? right? And yeah. this is what drivers are saying in the public comment period right now is, they want more flexibility to drive when they're awake and sleep when they're tired. Right. right so the message for carriers today on the update is, is make sure you get your comments in in the next 15 days. But by 9.28, that's the end of the 45 day period, you really need to get those comments in to get some flexibility, uh, certainly to drive safety outcomes, but improve uh, miles per track a week because that's the big change is you'll actually be able to run more hours with more flexibility. Wow, good stuff, Dean. So make sure you go ahead and make your comments out there. Also hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow us on all our social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. And everyone have a great and safe weekend.